There are many interesting people that work for the Adventurer's Guild. One of the many jobs there is called an investigator. And among the investigators, there is one that stands out. A young girl with an eye patch and an electrovision displayed clearly on her eccentric garb. This is a young lady by the name of Fischl, and she's one of the Adventurer Guild's rising stars. But how did Fischl go from being a rookie to being one of the most highly anticipated investigators in the guild? The short answer is that her parents, who are adventurers for the guild, convinced the guild master to let her become an investigator. But the long story is a lot more interesting. So join me as we dive deep into Fischl's backstory and learn how she became the person that she is today. Fischl would have a far from ordinary upbringing. Her parents have been adventurers for as long as she can remember. This means that they are often busy and away, spending very little time with Fischl at home. For this reason, Fischl spent a lot of time in the library, perusing through multitudes of novels, living in a variety of fantasy worlds, even if just for a short time. This escapism led into a hobby, which led into an obsession, as Fischl grew to enjoy these books deeply. Now it's at this moment I must admit to you that I've been deceitful, for her birth name is not Fischl, but rather Amy. But to learn why she prefers to go as Fischl, we must look at a transformative moment in her life. On one of the rare occasions that her parents were home from their many travels, they inquired about what books Amy had been reading at the time. Amy proceeded to recount a specific passage from a novel that she loved. And then he said, Fischl von Luftschloss Nofedut, You are the Princess Endeavor Echelung, my proud daughter. You shall never surrender your nobility and dream. Fischl's father smiled and said, Oh, that's a lovely story. Since you like it so much, Amy, how about I call you Fischl too? He put his hand on her head and repeated the words from the story to her. Fischl, you are my wonderful princess and my proud daughter. You shall never surrender your nobility and dream. It was at this moment that Amy would go by Amy no more, but rather would go by Fischl instead. However, the time with her parents was fleeting, and because of her odd obsession with fantasy novels and her newfound identity, she found it hard to fit in with her peers. This often left her feeling lonely and sad, but in these moments of doubt, she often thought back to the words her father said to her and remembered that never will she surrender her nobility and dreams, for they are a princess's rite of passage. Despite being a slight outcast, Fischl didn't mind living in this dream of hers, being a princess and wandering across the many universes of the fantasy worlds that she enjoyed so much. This was a good time and a good life for her. Despite being a social outcast, Fischl didn't mind living in this dream world. As a matter of fact, she loved it, spending her time passing through the countless universes of the fantasy novels that she so loved. But this dream's days were numbered, and on her 14th birthday, the time would come for something to change. The event on her 14th birthday started out somewhat ordinary with her peers mocking and ridiculing Fischl for the way that she behaved and spoke. Knowing that her peers were rare to accept her, she figured that she would go home and find comfort with her parents. But when she returned home, hoping to find the warm arms of her parents, instead, she was met with gentle exasperation, saying to her, Amy, you are 14 years old now. It's, it's fun to make believe, but eventually you need to grow up and put your childish dreams behind you. And with that, the same voice that had once lit up her world now tore it apart. This led to an emotional outburst from Fischl, where she locked herself in the library to escape her parents, whom she once felt safe with. This was the first moment in her life that she ever felt truly alone. The first moment where she didn't have the backing of her parents. 
Because normally, when she had doubts, and normally, when she was worried about her dreams crushing down around her, she at least knew that she could receive validation from the two people who loved her most, her parents. But now her parents weren't a safe place to share her dream, and so she hid alone in the library, weeping by herself. On the stroke of midnight, something miraculous would occur. She would look up from sobbing, only to meet eyes with those of a night raven. With the night raven came a vision. This vision and the night raven that followed along with it were all the validation Fischl needed for her identity. Whether or not her parents would support her in her identity or not, she would venture forward into the world with this night raven, Oz, who would always stay by her side, who never questioned Fischl for who she was. And having calmed down from her emotional outburst, she would return to dinner that night, except for the first time she would show up to dinner with a friend. Oz, my loyal companion. That we should have met this person, one who hails from another world as I do. Perhaps even cruel fate has deigned to smile upon me, though sin courses through my veins. If I am indeed destined to remain here, in this inescapable prison that is reality, at least... I understand, main Fräulein. In this traveler, Fräulein has found one who will never forsake her. Her parents were understandably confused. Noticing that their child had a vision, and a giant talking raven following her everywhere, they had a couple things to adjust to. With that all being said, though, it must be noted that they were very happy that she finally had a friend. And maybe that was their biggest concern of all, that Fischl and all her oddities, though they loved her so very much, would leave her friendless for the rest of her life. And now knowing that this would not be the case, her parents started to worry about other aspects of her future. What would Fischl do for work, for instance? They would come to find out that Fischl had the extraordinary ability to see through Oz's eyes. Wherever Oz can fly, wherever Oz may roam, Fischl can see everything just the same. This is a powerful ability and surely is the reason why she has climbed so high in the ranks of the Adventurers Guild. Now with backstory out of the way, one may wonder, who exactly is Fischl? Uh, she's a princess, so far as we know. But other than that, what do we know about Princess Fischl? Well, the identity of Fischl actually happens to come from a character in a fantasy novel that she enjoys so very much. This character is Fischl, Princessin Dev Echelum, and she is the princess of the Imanacht. Right. In the story that she is from, Fischl, the princess, is actually the divine halberd hidden in human form, whose role is to slay the god king, her own father, and restore order to the world. This identity is one of a divine arbiter of justice. She views herself as the judge of all sin, the entity that everyone must one day meet to be judged. Her home, the Imanachreich, is where all worlds and dreams come to rest. From looking at this story, it's actually quite clear why Fischl would relate so much to the story of the princess. You see, Fischl as a young girl admired her parents so very much and relied on them for validation of her own being. And the only way that she could stand on her own and, and proclaim independence was by severing those ties to her parents and the necessity of validation from them. This isn't to say that she hates her parents or that she has disdain for their earthly ways, but rather she has come to learn that she does not need them for affirmation. Fischl is who she is and she must stand on her own. As for her night raven, Osvaldo Hraftevins, or Oz for short, he is seemingly an entity generated from elemental energy. But more than that, he seems to be an entity separate from Fischl herself, although born from her subconscious. He is more representative of the friend and partner 
that Fischl had always wished to have on her journeys and her adventures through the multitude of worlds. And although Oz was born from Fischl's vision and her dreams, it seems that he has a personality and identity of his own. He loves to serve Fischl and will always remain by her side. Although sometimes he does act as a translator or bodyguard when people are misunderstanding Fischl for who she really is or what she really means. You see, with Fischl's way of speaking, it can be quite hard to understand exactly what she's trying to get at. And for this reason, there's currently a Fischl dictionary in circulation at the Adventurer's Guild. This is namely a book that pokes fun at Fischl for the way that she speaks, with mocking translations of things that you may very well hear Fischl say, but they're exaggerated, of course. That being said, the joke isn't entirely inaccurate. Some may say that you need a dictionary to communicate with Fischl effective, or just spend a lot of time with her. Regardless, Fischl is a kind, caring, and hardworking individual. As long as you respect who she is, she will get along with you, and this may even gain you her favor. So when you first meet Fischl, it may seem like she's acting. It may seem like she's on a stage or like the whole world's a play. But no matter how deceptive this seems, it's actually the truth of her being. She is, in fact, her authentic self, regardless of what you think of that. And it's really only a matter of whether you agree to respect that choice or not. For that reason, if you spend time with Fischl and learn to speak the way she does, you'll find that she's actually quite impressed and deems this a way of showing respect. As a matter of fact, you'll probably make her quite bashful, as very few people are willing to go through such lengths to communicate with her effectively. Now there's very much more we could say about Fischl, like how all of the stories she references are dark and chaotic, seemingly representative of an influence from Germanic folklore, where the stories feature dark and terrifying beasts in a supernatural world beyond our understanding. But that'll bring us to the end of Fischl's backstory and bring us up to where she is today. And what does the future hold for Fischl? Well, considering she has an eye that can see the fate of everything in the universe, I'm sure that at least she knows. So thank you for joining me in this story time video. If you enjoyed and you'd like to see more Genshin lore, more Genshin character backstories told with this silky smooth voice, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and comment down below, give me ideas for future episodes, or your honest feedback would be very appreciated. And as always, stay healthy, stay hydrated. Peace, everybody.